Hey guys, there's Soft Tech here and welcome back. Today on this episode of Inside the Gearbox, we're going to be going over helical gears, what they are, what to use them for, and how to install them. So what are helical gears? Helical gears are gears that have a less than 90 degree angle, angled cut and mesh with each other over straight gears. And this allows, the, this angle allows the uh, helical gears to mesh and make more contact with each other than regular straight cut gears, allowing for a smoother and quieter action under normal circumstances. So what do we use helical gears for? In Airsoft, they're traditionally used for torque up applications, M150, M170, DMR kind of builds. But recently, I've started seeing people use them in mid-speed, regular field gun applications, like 25 rounds per second, and sometimes upwards of, three, of 30 rounds per second. So really, helical gears are just used for whatever you wanna use them for. And uh, that can be because you like the smooth action or because you just like the helical cut design and you want as much contact between your gears as possible. So as mentioned before, helical gears are a type of torque up gear. Now I know what you guys are thinking, that all gears are technically torque up style gears because they multiply the motor's torque capacity over distance. That's true, but in Airsoft I tend to understand gears as speed, mid speed to you know low speed torque up gears. So 10 to one to 16 to one is usually thought of as high speed. And 16 to one to 20 to one is usually thought of as balance or mid speed. And then anything over 20 to 1 is usually considered a torque up style gear set. And helical gears come in two different types of ratios as far as I understand. 100 to 200 and 100 to 300. Now 100 to 200 is just the way they measure helical gear ratio. That translates to about 24 to 1 in terms that we best understand. And 100 to 300, if I remember correctly, translates to about 36 to 1. So these are torque up style gear sets that they fit in that category. But you don't always have to use them in pure torque up applications. So let's actually get down to how you install them and stuff like that. It's a little bit different than straight cut gears, uh, but not a whole lot different. The shimming process is about the same, but there's just a couple things that I like to watch out for when installing helical gears. All right, so this gearbox is from my Classic Army G3 LMG build, so uh, the helical gears work great for this kind of concept. But uh, anyway, shimming helical gears is essentially the same process as shimming straight tooth gears, but there's, there are a few little differences along the way, and I figured it warranted uh, a video. So let's actually break down what is different. All right, so there really aren't a whole lot of uh, differences shimming helical gears versus shimming straight tooth gears, but let's go over it anyway, because if you don't know them, then you could do something fatally wrong and ruin your gear set. Um, the similarities are you know, 90% of, 90% the same as shimming straight tooth gears. You know, lock your bushings down, keep your cutoff lever in, screw your gearbox shell down every single time you test your gear set for shimming stuff. Um, I'll, we always start with beveled opinion, never start with the spur gear first. That, it's, it's very simple stuff that is the same. Now, the differences are just a few details that are very important. Um, so when shimming helical gears, well, when I shim them at least, I, I pay a lot more attention to the percent of contact between tooth to tooth than I do straight tooth gears. And the simple reason is because these helical gears are designed to make contact with each other at 80 or 90 percent like tooth to tooth contact and so if you need to shim up your sector gear a lot to clear your cutoff lever and you've only got like 60 or 50 percent contact even that's going to make a lot of noise because these gears are not designed to do that and so you need to find a way to uh utilize that helical gear appropriately as opposed to shimming it up like you would a straight tooth gear um, another thing too is that uh I always shim these gears a little bit tighter than straight tooth gears. Not not really tighter, that's, that's kind of the wrong word to use. I don't shim them too tight to where I've de defeated the purpose of appropriate shimming, but I shim the, I, I pay a lot more attention to side to side movement than I do with straight tooth gears. Side to side movement with helical gears is a lot more dangerous than side to side movement with straight tooth gears. With straight tooth gears, they're just, you know, gliding on top of each, or side to side like this. That's not usually a big problem because the teeth are 90 degrees against each other. Well. With helical gears, again, these are 30, 30 to 40 degree angles that you're working with here. When they go up and down, they kind of grind against each other as they go up and down. And so if you have a loosely shimmed sector gear, like that's usually the most loose uh, gear that people shim, uh, 
then you're going to have a sector here that as it pulls back on the piston, it wants to go up. And as it tries to go up, it's going to pull against those teeth. And now you have a kind of a loud action there. And so you have a, a you know wasted energy, you have heat build up, you have grinding and wearing down. It's not going to create a good sound and it's going to create more amp draw. And so I just pay a lot more attention to how much side to side movement my helical gears have versus my straight tooth gears. Uh, one last thing too is that I always use bushings whenever I'm working with helical gears over bearings. Now I do that simply because, like I said before, I make these gears, I pay a lot more special attention to how tight they are inside the gearbox shell. So if you have a slightly tighter gear, like a helical gear versus a straight tooth gear, then you're going to have a little more stress on your bearings and it just creates more room for air. Now, Theoretically, if you shim perfectly, you can use bearings or bushings, whatever you want. But I tend to take into account that I might do something wrong, so therefore I'm going to use the thing that has the least potential failure, which is going to be bushings over bearings. And if you're going to go if you're going to go out for a helical gear setup and you're going to want to do this fancy mechanical setup, then I would recommend getting some nice bushings, Lonex, FLT. These are FLT here, and they're very very nice. Um, but yeah, those are basically all of the differences. Um, they're just enough to where, you know, like I said, I feel like it warranted me uh, making a video telling you guys about it. But uh, yeah, obviously when you're done shimming, close your gearbox up, uh, screw it down and test the rotation and the side to side movement of each gear. And make sure you visualize too that each gear is making appropriate contact. Don't just assume. Close your gearbox up, screw it down, take out the be take out the bevel, and look at the spur to set your contact. Okay, that looks good. Take out the sector gear, screw it down, and look at the bevel to spur contact through this little peak hole. That kind of stuff that a lot of people overlook. That again is kind of considered basic shimming principles. You really need to apply all that knowledge when you're shimming helical gears. All right, so obviously you want to close up your gearbox shell and do a final test here. A um, couple point pointers here. Um, I always will do this. I'll close up the gearbox shell. I'll kind of test it, the whole unit, and I'll listen for inappropriate contact kind of stuff, rubbing, uh, scraping, uh, loud scratching noises tend to be a bad sign that you need to find and uh, and solve. But uh, well, another you know another tip here: don't just rotate your gears. Be like, oh, they got you know 12 rotations. That's great. That they're good. That means they're good to go. It's not how it works. You need to make sure that, that it's free, back and forth movement with very little resistance. And again, like you don't hear any bad sounds. Um, uh, as like I said, you know you want to test every single gear height. Bevel looks good. Sector gear looks really good, and the spur gear, that's hard to test. Just because the selector plate's on, that looks really good. Um, yeah, also these gears are greased up, so they're gonna be a little slower, but you can kind of see some action here. And that clicking sound you hear is the sector gear hitting the cutoff lever, because it's still installed, always shim with your cutoff lever. Um, yeah, so there you go. And these gears are also greased, so they're gonna be a little bit uh, more difficult to rotate freely. But yeah, always do this final test before you close the gun up and shoot it. All right, so here is the finally assembled uh, whole gun here <clears throat> with the helical gears installed, obviously. Uh, I'll be doing a, a demonstration run here, but I don't have my selector switch. It's uh, been broken, so I have to kind of deal with what I have here. So it's kind of stuck in full auto, but that's okay. Here we go. And there, you can kind of hear, it doesn't sound all that appealing, honestly. Uh, I've never been able to get this SHS helical set to sound exactly the way I want it to. Uh, really, the better uh, helical gear sets are Systema and Prometheus, to be honest. Uh, SHS, just as you guys know, has some quality control issues, but um, it might be something to opinion, I'll have to check it out. But uh, that's about as best as I can do right now, I believe. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that you don't need a special type of pinion gear or piston to work with standard helical gears. Now, Lonex does make a bevel gear that has a, you know, spiral helical design to it to attach to a, you know, helical uh, pinion gear, but that's not standard for most helical gears like SHS, Prometheus, or uh, Systema. And same thing goes with a piston. Now I have heard that there are pistons that are like helical in design that exist out there, but I've never seen one myself, so I cannot confirm that.
All right, guys, that's going to have to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me down below what I can be doing different, and tell me what your all's experience is with helical gears. Tell me uh, what builds you've used them in and what builds you plan to use them in in the future, or if you even care about them at all. Again, thank you for watching, but that's going to have to do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. But until then, stay tuned, techs.